Hey everyone. This video right here is for the nonfiction writers that use Pseudorite. We have a lot of people coming in that actually want to use Story Engine or now Story Bible for their nonfiction work. Story Engine is not geared towards nonfiction. I've seen people play around with the style boxes and all the other boxes trying to coerce it and wrangle it into a nonfiction structure and output. It just, it's not satisfying. I've read some of it. It doesn't jive for what nonfiction readers expect. However, PseudoWrite has first draft and first draft happens to be really excellent at doing nonfiction. Obviously, same with ChatGPT, Playground, any other AI you use, you want to validate the input, or I'm sorry, output. So I'm going to put the prompts into first draft, and these are the ones I put together. They come from my uh, workflow docs that I share in classes, and I will actually link this entire document in the description. I am using, I normally use these two. I'm using the slightly expanded version today of this one. So I already have those ready. I'm just going to copy it real quick. Now remember, if you don't have plugins, you likely have a section up here that says more. That's what I would be essentially clicking into for first draft right here. I do also, of course, have the Story Bible UI. As you can see, things look a little bit different. If you still have Story Engine here, then you just create a blank doc and you will have a hyperlink section that says generate a first draft. And you can click there and it's going to bring you up to the box that you're about to see. This is what you will see whenever you click the hyperlink inside regular pseudowrite proper in the old interface. So I'm just telling it, write an outline for a nonfiction book about uncharted islands and lands, focusing on the mysteries of yet to be explored or lesser known territories on our planet. I'm gonna go and watch the pretty sparkles, one of my favorite things. Now, obviously, you will want to go through and kind of research all of these. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. I'm just showing you how you can do the nonfiction work. These prompts, again, are something you can also take into ChatGPT or whatever your preferred AI is. So now we are going to do a chapter. I'm just going to copy this real quick. the example. And I'm going to pick one of these. Looking for anything that just kind of stands out. Oh, I like this. Stories of shipwrecks and buried treasure or the next one. These are actually all right up my alley. These are definitely books I would love to actually do. Let's stick more with the theme of the story or the book. And I'm just going to say for, let's do Madagascar. Okay, I'm going to make a new document. So I'll need that as of right now because I don't have the first draft uh, option up here because this document is full, you always have to have a blank document to use first draft, whether it's in the Story Bible UI or the old interface. And just as a quick update, this is a bug. You see my things up here disappeared. They're working on that. Let me refresh real quick to get that back. As a quick update, they are expecting to be pretty close to releasing the Story Bible interface to everyone. And Expected in one to two weeks, I would say, unless something comes up. Let's go back into first draft. I'm going to paste that prompt that I copied from here. 
I don't remember what the chapter number was, but I'm just going to put in chapter three. This is focusing on Madagascar. We're going to say for a nonfiction book about Chapter 34, nonfiction book about uncharted lands and islands, and we're focusing on Madagascar. Obviously, this isn't perfect. This is just for demonstration purposes. I would otherwise have everything written out and all of my prompts planned and in line and perfectly worded. But this is essentially how you can get your nonfiction book going and have a really good start. I'm going to show you one other thing. As soon as this is done, because I'm kind of interested in this actually. Over 55 species of chameleons. I would not have thought that. Again, we would have to fact check. So let's go back to the outline. So in the new version, I can rename it here or as usual, click the three dots that are located over here. So to move this real quick, separate them. As soon as you name it here, it pops up. I am going to actually take all of this again, have a new document, and the bug is back. So this bug is every time you do a new document after doing first draft, it seems to just make all of these toolbars disappear. So I have the outline. I'm just going to say, start writing this nonfiction book. I'm going to let it go because I want to see how many words. Typically, it usually runs about 800. And you can see how short the sections are right now. Just a little paragraph for each. So obviously this is something we would expand. But again, this is a really good start. And it's also something you can do inside ChatGPT or your other favorite AI. I just wanted to show that you can also use it inside First Draft for those Pseudorite users who really wanted to start doing some nonfiction work here. Another great thing about it being right here in first draft, especially with the new user interface, now I can actually start using some of the laser tools. Let's see. Modern explorers have a variety of advanced. Okay. So you know what? Let's expand that. And then it gives you all of those things right there. So again, it's not a one-click thing. Nothing inside Pseudorite is. You really need to validate the information and edit and do everything to your liking. But this is a really good start. So we have 852 words from just putting the little outline in. It did not do the entire outline. So really what it looks like it did, let me make sure if we have Africa, Antarctica, mysteries and treasures. So I think it just did the major topics, not the subtopics. Africa, Antarctica. Yeah, so it did the major section. It did the sections, but not the subtopics, which again is no big deal because I can also turn around and take each of these little sections into first draft or just doing the little prompt 
that I started off doing and focusing on one at a time. Whatever works for you. There's always several ways to do things inside Pseudorite. And I always encourage everyone to find the method that works best for them. And again, I will be using uh, linking this document. It is a notion. If you have been in my Pseudorite classes, you know, I always give you my documents with like the prompts and helpful tips and everything. Those documents have really gotten out of hand and there's just page after page after page. So I wanted to bring everything inside Notion since I can organize it a little bit better. For those who don't have Notion and you're unaware of how to use it or anything, it doesn't cost. There is a paid version, but you do not need that. So you can access this document without having to pay for an account or anything. And this also has each way I do um, all the little boxes inside Story Engine, or what is now Story Bible. I still haven't gotten used to calling it that. I give y'all all of my prompts and everything. And this is actually all going to be in the book that is releasing too on October 29th for my AI for Authors series. But you get it right now. So thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope it helps you with your nonfiction books. Bye, everyone.